Hey, what's up, fellas? How you doing, man? It's Anelli here. Hey, what's going on, guys? How we doing? Matt Antonelli here. Today, we're talking some college baseball recruiting tips and advice. If you're a high school player looking to play in college, if you're a parent of a high school player looking to play in college, I think this will really help you. We've made tons of college recruiting videos, so go and check those out after you watch this one. All right, before we get into it, today's video is powered by Triton. If you go watch our stuff, you know Jerseys, gear, we get it all from Triton. Go check out their stuff, custombaseballjerseys.com. They do a great job. I highly recommend that you go over there and see what they got. Okay, so today we're going to talk about one of the biggest issues I see with college recruiting, okay, and with high school players in general, and that is being realistic, okay? And it's being realistic about a bunch of things, okay? But we're going to talk here for a little bit about some of, the, some of the things that I think get players and parents in trouble and make the recruiting process much, much more difficult for them, okay? So first, let's start off with a couple of numbers, okay? I think it's really, really important to do this. The first thing is, if you look at the Division I programs, okay, only about 1% to 2%, so let's say about 1.5% of high school players go on and play at the Division I level, okay? And so it's a very, very small number, okay? And this is not to make anyone out there feel like, oh, no, you can't play the Division I level. Like That's not what I'm trying to do at all. But what I do want players to understand is, one, I think it is absolutely right. The Division I programs, okay, everybody, most players that I talk to, you know, those are the schools they know of. Like when you watch TV, when you watch big-time football, or you turn on the TV and watch baseball, right? It's all the Division One programs, right? You're seeing Vandy and UNC and Louisville and Florida State and Miami and Cal State Fullerton and Oregon State. And, you know, that's all you see. That's all players see. So it's natural for players to want to play at those schools, okay? Like I wanted to play for the Red Sox when I was younger. Why? Because they were on TV all the time. They're my local team. I wanted to play for them, all right? It's the same thing in college baseball. And most parents, when they look at colleges, those are the colleges that they've kind of heard of in the same thing. That's what you see on TV all the time, right? You're watching you're a big college football fan. You're watching Alabama and Notre Dame. and like, You're not watching D3, like, I don't know. I'm not going to name any schools, but you're not seeing those guys on TV. Okay, so that's the first thing. And I totally understand. And I totally get it. And I think if you want to play there, work your butt off, and hopefully one day you can play there. But what I want you to understand is that you also have to be realistic in understanding the numbers when it comes down to it. And only 1.5% are going to play there. Okay? So that's the first number I want you to keep in mind. All right? The second number is just over 5% of all high school players or high school baseball players are going to play in college. So again, it's a pretty small number. Now I know that there's a lot of high school baseball players that don't even want to play college baseball, right? Um, some end up going to play a different sport in college. Some just don't want to play at all, okay? So that helps out a little bit when it comes to those numbers, okay? So 5%, but still 5% is very small, all right? So the thing is, it's difficult to play college baseball. Okay, college base, playing college baseball is not for everybody, all right? And so you have to be a good player. You don't have to be a great player. I'm not saying you have to, if you're a pitcher, you don't have to throw 90 miles an hour to play in college baseball. If you're a position player, you don't have to hit 450-foot bombs or run a 6 four sixty. Like, you don't have to be a great, great player. But you've got to be a, a good player, okay? You've got to be a good player. And, you know, sometimes people tell you, like, you know, there's, there's a... There's a place for everybody. Every call, every high school player that wants to play baseball, there's a place for you. Now, um, that's not completely true, okay? Uh, there are certain levels, there's certain schools out there that are not the greatest baseball. There's not a lot of them, though, okay? There's not a lot of them. And if you want to play it at some of those schools, you're going to have to weigh... You know, maybe it's not the best academic school for you. Maybe it's not in the part of the country you want to go to, right? How bad do you just want to go and play college baseball, all right? We'll get into that in another video. But my main point here is 5%, okay? So it's not, you can't, it's not for everybody. It is not for everyone, all right? You've got to be a good player. You've got to work hard. You've got to do all the things we talk about in all the other videos to give yourself a chance to play college baseball, right? All the off-field work, all the on-field work, everything, all right? So again... Just giving you some numbers so you understand 
that there's going to take some work both on and off the field and that it's difficult to play college baseball. You're going to have to bust your butt, all right? Now, when it comes to being realistic, the biggest thing I see that hurts players and parents in the recruiting process is not being realistic about the player's ability and where they can play in college, okay? Now, like I said, I want you to shoot for the level you want to play at. If you want to play D1, I want you to bust your butt and work as hard as you can to play at that level. But when it comes down to the actual period to be recruited, let's say, you know, the biggest time for recruiting for most college players is going to come after your junior year of high school. All right, so your junior year of high school ends. That summer, going into your senior year, that is the biggest time for college recruiting. Now, if you're a great player and you're going to go play at a top Division One program in the country, then it might be the year before that, okay? But the majority of players getting recruited is going to be right after that junior year of high school. All right, so Division One schools are still looking for players. Division Two schools are really getting going. Division Three schools is like they go from that summer and even into the fall. All right, so that's the the main part of the year. And if you're in that main part of the year and you're getting you're going through that, okay, and you're what I see happen a lot is players are set on like three Division One schools. Okay, oh these are the three schools I want to go to. And they don't have the ability to play at those schools. But they want to go there, okay? And they're not being realistic about their ability, all right? And they're getting no interest. And they keep saying, but this is where I want to go. These are my schools. And I work with tons of high school players to help them in the recruiting process. And every now and then, or sometimes more often than every now and then, I say, listen, I know these are your three favorite schools of all time. But your skill set doesn't warrant you playing there. Okay, these are the schools that you should be looking at. But I want to go to those schools. That's where I want to play. I understand that. You can keep banging at that door, but I'm telling you that the, no one's no one's going to answer. And I'm just being honest. These are the schools that you have to be looking at. These schools right here. This is where your skill set warrants you playing at. Okay. And I get a lot of players that keep saying, no, those are the these three schools. Right. And go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Okay, because they're not being realistic about their skill set. Now, I love the confidence, okay? I love the confidence that they want to go play there, and they've, I've worked so hard to get there, and that's where I've always wanted to play, and that's fantastic. But eventually, you have to be realistic. And if you continue to try to knock down that door that's saying, this just isn't the right fit for you, okay? You're going to miss out on the opportunities that are the right fit, and that's the biggest thing, Okay. So it is a tr- it, it's tricky because as a coach and as a player, you never want to say like, listen, dude, like, I know you want to go there, but you're not going there. Like, it, it's just not the right fit. That's hard to do, but I think you, you have to be realistic as a player. And as a coach or as a mentor, as someone that's trying to help players navigate or families navigate, if the player can't play there, there's no point in trying to continually knock down that door and waste time and opportunities out of other places. And I've seen this happen with certain players. There's a lot of players that does. A lot of players say, you're right. Like, you know, I gave it my best shot and I'm not a good fit there and I've got to start looking at these schools. But there are certain players that I go back and forth with. And then the summer ends and they get into fall. And now they're still not getting recruited at the schools they want. And they're like, coach, what's going on? Like, this school wasn't at this game or we didn't go to this tournament or... You know, there's a hundred different things that come up when it's it's the schools that you're looking at, okay? And a lot of players even get, they, they get recruited by other schools that maybe aren't those schools, but they tell them, no, no, I'm good. Thank you, coach. I have no interest in there. These are the schools I'm going to. So we talk to our players about don't burn bridges, right? And so that's another video. If, I, if you haven't checked it out, go check it out. But this is a long way to say you've got to be realistic, Okay, you've got to understand your skill set. And sometimes that can be difficult. And what I always say is you've got to find somebody that you can use that is that is help players move on to the college level, whether that's your high school coach, whether that's a summer ball coach, whether that's just somebody that's, again, maybe it's a friend, a family friend. I'd be careful sometimes, though, someone not too, too close, because you got to have somebody that can be honest with you. So it's not just about understanding skill sets and where players can play at, but it's also someone that'll be honest with you and not someone who'll be like, yeah, buddy, you can play there if they really can't. If they can, terrific. 
right? But it's a lot of times I see a guy that can't play at a school, right? They want to go to Vanderbilt and there's just no chance in playing at Vanderbilt. And certain people be like, you can do it, Johnny, you can do it. And it's like, if it's, if it's super, super early, fine to go, go ahead, give, give him that. But if it's like running out of time here, like this is, you're not going to go to that school. You can't just can't, keep going, Johnny, keep sending the emails and keep going to that college camp. You've gone 42 times, but the 43rd one, they're going to like you. Like you got to be more realistic than that. Okay. And so find somebody that can be honest with you that has seen college high school players that knows skill sets that knows college coaches that's what you got to really do you got to have somebody like that if you don't if if you don't understand the process yourself and a lot of times it can be difficult because i'm not i'm not a parent of a high school player right i am a parent and i think my son's awesome <laughs> i think he's really good we'll see what happens when he gets older maybe i'll be that parent that like you know I'm like, yeah, man, you're like, let's go to that Red Sox tryout. And he has no chance. I don't know. I, I, we'll see what happens when I get there. But I know that a lot of parents, they think their kid is the best, which is awesome. You should think your kid is the best. But sometimes you might need somebody else to kind of help evaluate your player or your son or daughter. This works in softball also, right? But be able to evaluate and give you some good insight into, you know, where does your skill set warrant you playing at, okay? So, um, what else? Again, don't waste your time at those schools that you have no chance at playing at. Okay, that's the easiest, most blunt way I can say it. Don't waste your time because you're going to miss out on opportunities at other levels that you would have a really good chance at playing at. Okay, um, and then what else? Be realistic about academics. Okay, this is another thing. A lot of players think, well, if I'm a good player, I can play anywhere. Right, doesn't matter what my grades are. That is a hundred percent false. Okay, I've recruited at college. I recruited at a, at a when I was at Holy Cross recruiting. Holy Cross is a very good academic school. The first thing we did when we went and watched players is I got the sheet of all the players, and the first one thing I did was I went to the grades, and I just you just stop marking players off because no matter how good they are, they could be Babe Ruth. It doesn't matter. I can't get them into the school. Okay, and that's the way it is at the majority of colleges. Okay, so don't think that, oh, if I'm good, I can, it doesn't matter, they'll get me in. There's a couple of schools, <laughs> there's a handful of schools that can do that. Okay, there's some schools, I would say a lot of the D1s have the ability to help you, help you. Okay, so if you're just missing out, right. If you were a normal student, you wouldn't get into the school. But since you're a baseball player, they can help you out a little bit. But don't get this confused with saying, well, you know, it doesn't matter what I do. They'll, they can just get me in. That, those are two different things, okay? For instance, I played at Wake Forest. If I was a normal student, I wasn't getting into Wake Forest. I had good grades, though, okay? Back in the day, I had a 12-10 SAT. I had a 3-5 GPA coming out of a pretty good high school. I wasn't getting into Wake Forest without baseball. With baseball, I got in, okay? Now, players even less than those grades. Again, if you're really, really good and they really, really like you, if you got an 800 on your SAT, you ain't going to Wake Forest or you ain't going to a lot of schools, okay? Or 900 or even a 1,000, maybe it you know, depends. Again, depends on the school. But they can help players, but they can't just get you in no matter what. We have a lot of players right now with Antonelli Baseball. We have a lot of really, really good players. I shouldn't say a lot. But every year we have players that are really, really good players. And colleges tell me, good colleges, Division I, good programs tell me, sorry, we love them. But we can't make it work. I can't get it. Academically, we can't do it. It doesn't work. Okay? So I have to deliver that message to players every year. So I know firsthand that it doesn't matter just how good you are. You have to be realistic academically. Okay? And this is really easy to do. Do your homework. Go online. Everything's online. Check out what the school's average SAT is, right? See if they actually take SAT scores now, or maybe it's the ACT, all right? What's the average GPA? And you get a really good idea. If you, if you can't go to Harvard, don't put Harvard on your list, all right? Again, go check out our target list video. If you, you know, just don't do it. And don't say, well, I'm really good at baseball. It doesn't matter. Okay. Now the higher academic schools, it's, those are the ones where they really, you know, those schools have very little leeway. You've got to be pretty close 
academically okay to get there now you go down the list and you get to some lesser academic schools maybe they get a little bit more pull but the bottom line is academics matter test scores matter gpa really matters okay gpa matters and you can't you got to be realistic they're not just going to let anyone in okay so let's end it right here biggest thing be realistic okay if you're not realistic you're going to waste your time waste your energy waste a lot of money traveling around to all these different schools and looking at schools that you have no chance of going to all right and i don't mean to be mean i just want to make sure this is probably the number one thing it is the number one thing that i see players and families mess up on is they don't want to be realistic okay so if you have any more questions put in the comment section below i've made a ton of college recruiting videos go check them all out i think they'll be helpful um subscribe to the channel give it a thumbs up share with all your friends all that good stuff We'll talk to you later.